there's just too much light in the city. There's not enough space for starlight or for moonlight. There's just light pollution, light pollution, light pollution. <music> What's up everyone? Today is going to be a tutorial day, tutorial, tutorial day where I go ahead and talk about how I did some of the, some of the star photography they can check out on my Instagram. I'll show you one of the images right here. So first things first for this actual photography tutorial is your location, just straight up. If you want to get an image like this, you have to get away from the city. You can't be in Chicago hoping to get a picture like this unless there's a way you know how to do it there's not a way i know how to do it the way i had to do was i was actually out in wisconsin about two or three weekends ago i was out there with my friend dan my girlfriend tay we're all hanging out for the weekend and we obviously took the moment since we were in madison to just go further west about 40 to 45 minutes and that went ahead and brought us to a location where we had we were at blue mount state park and at Blue Mountain State Park, we were there at like 6.30, 7 o'clock, and it's winter time, so it gets dark very easily. And that's, you, you could immediately see the stars just being in there. So we drove up to the spot. We went to one of the towers, and we set up our cameras to go ahead and take some of the some of, some of the photos for the night. One of the major things about this that you really want to make sure you're remaining consistent with is the settings on your actual camera. So this was one of my first times actually doing this. I've seen tutorial after tutorial after tutorial about how to go about it. This was the first time I was actually taking my camera right here and attempting to do it for myself. So the settings that I went ahead and used for this specifically were first off a low ISO. Um, it might be a bit tricky and you might think that you want to use a higher ISO because you need to expose the sky and it's really dark but the reason you wouldn't want to do that is that's something I actually did with my moonshot that you can check out right here and that moonshot's really grainy and the reason it's really grainy is because I boosted up my ISO as high as I can. Now I have a Canon T3i so my ISO can only go so high before it starts to look grainy and kind of bleh. But you might have a better camera and your camera might be a lot better with that i know the sony a7s mark ii i think has been like incredible in um in low light situations so maybe you have that camera um i don't i have the t3i so iso has to remain low I, I think i kept that at about a 200 or 400 and then i opened up my aperture all the way so i had it very wide so that allows a lot more light to come in and then i boosted my shutter speed which is probably the main thing for this as high as i could not to bulb i think i did it at about 30 like in between 30 or 20 seconds and that is brings me pretty much into what you'll actually want to bring with you so if you don't have a tripod you want to make sure that you at least have somewhere you could set your camera up so that you can put it down um, and just leave it and that's something my friend Dan actually did he didn't have a tripod to mount his camera on and when you have such a lo long exposure you're gonna get a blurry image you're gonna get blurry uh, pictures if you try to hold that with your hand and your exposure is set for 20 seconds so There's just natural movements in your hands. There's natural movements. You can't control those are all gonna make that super blurry And that actually happened to me a couple of times with some of the pictures. I'll show right now So those pictures were all blurry because I actually moved my camera after I had already pushed the shutter button so you want to make sure that you have a tripod or just lay your camera down which is again what my friend Dan did and I'll actually throw one of his images in right here that's a picture he took and he just left his camera sitting on a ledge pressed the shutter button and then stood back as his camera went ahead and took the photo for uh, for the stars for me I actually brought my gorilla pod with me it's over there I'm not gonna grab it but it's just a regular Joel B gorilla gorilla pod if you're interested you can find them on Amazon I had that and I pretty much took the legs and I wrapped it around one of the like binocular things that they have where you can go ahead and look in so the tower we were at you can look into these binoculars and in the distance you could pretty much see the capital and I used that guy to 
pretty much bend the legs and hold my camera. And that was really good because then the moment you press the shutter button, you just want to leave that guy alone. You don't want to touch it. The other thing you'd probably want to bring is a, a remote shutter. So I have the newer remote shutter and I actually didn't use it for these photos because I was too cold to actually take my hands out, put my remote shutter in and use it in that way. But it would have been more beneficial because when you actually press the shutter button on your camera, even if you quickly tap it and then let go of your camera, there is some movement that will be caught by your camera. So even if you quickly tap it and like, your image could still possibly be not completely blurry a little bit blurry and it's probably something i should have taken the effort to do but my hands were just so cold we were in the middle of nowhere we were freezing it was night i had hand warmers and like the little bit of hand warmth that i had went into pressing my shutter and then sticking them back into my pockets and grabbing onto some hand warmers to try to warm up for the next shot so but that is something you would want to consider and even without using that my pictures came out pretty decent that's sort of the process of actually going somewhere the things you need the tripod and the camera and the settings on your camera that you'd want to use for star photography now specifically bringing it into photoshop you want to make sure that you're shooting raw images because then you could always process those in Photoshop later on on your computer and that gives you a lot of control with what you're actually given. So originally my images actually look like this but at the end of processing they look like this and the reason for that is that when you shoot raw you have a lot more information that your camera is absorbing a lot more information that is being collected if you were to shoot in jpeg which is a compressed format on your camera a lot of times you don't get as much information something an example i, I sort of give is if you have two different reds and one is sort of a slightly darker red versus the other one which is a slightly brighter red in a jpeg format in a compressed format they might merge those two together and say they're the same exact red that's what a compressed format would do but an uncompressed format or or a raw file such as on the t3i would do it says we have this one red and it's just just a tint lighter than this other red but we're going to save the information and we're going to save the data that says these two reds are different instead of merging them as the same exact red and that gives you a lot more control as far as editing and processing those images later on when it comes to photoshop i'm going to go ahead and open up photoshop right now and show you the differences that you could go ahead and do when you import these images and and just the differences that you have when you move around and play around with the sliders and things of that sort so we're going to go ahead and open up photoshop instagram instagram slash cool stuff so you'll notice that right here you see all these files are CR2 files that's how you know that you shot in raw pretty much if it wasn't a raw file it wouldn't say CR2 it would say .jpeg or um, .png um, anything of that anything of that sort but if you shot in raw on your camera you will see on your camera uh, once you import those foot uh, those files into your computer you will see that they are CR2 files so the .xmp files right here are files that actually pop up because they save the metadata of photos that you've already went ahead and touched up. So if you see something like that pop up under your CR2 file, uh, when you go ahead and try to um, import a file into Photoshop or open it with Photoshop, you'll see it pop up and that's to reference if it goes back. Um, it references the touch-ups that you made before you actually imported it into uh, Photoshop and the adjustments that you made beforehand. So let's do one that I haven't really touched just yet. This guy looks good. So I'll just open with Photoshop right here. My computer goes so fast now. All right, so right here you see that you get your adjustments. Um, you can do as shot for your white balance or auto. Uh, so you get to play around with that. You can warm it up with the temperature or you can cool it off. Um, I'm just gonna keep it regularly. I don't 
really want to tweak it at all. Uh, the more important things are going to be right here. It's going to be your exposure, your contrast, your highlights, and your shadows. Those will all play a big role into the uh, exposure of the stars and how well you can actually see them. So right now we kind of got this very cloudy image uh, and that's straight from camera. This is what I got. It's actually really funny because I didn't even see that there were this many stars um, out there. So it's really interesting to see uh, how the camera actually picks up more stars than, than your eyes can. So if I go ahead and lower the exposure just a little bit. I, if you go the opposite way, you're obviously going to blow out your image. And you want to go the other way so that you see some exposure coming into the sky. That's pretty much what I did with the images that I had. And then obviously the stars themselves will continue to pop and it's less clouded and the stars themselves are actually more defined. And if you increase the contrast can see that now you're getting a little bit of texture here too you got some of the clouds going on right there and then you're seeing more stars start to pop out in the borders of the image again this is all exactly what I did you might have a different process you may know of a different process uh, and that's totally fine but this is just what I did with the three images that I put up on my Instagram um, and just sort of how I went about it so all in all it's just kind of playing with these um, I like it lower or higher. I think I'm going to boost the highlights just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit like that. And then shadows. I kind of like how we fall off a little bit here. I'm going to leave the shadows a little bit more. I like what it's doing in the corners right there. It's kind of creating this natural sort of big net, big netta, big net. I don't know how to say that. Uh, you can also play with the uh, blacks and whites. I don't think I did this too much for my photos. I don't really want to do anything with it right now either. Uh, as far as clarity, I don't. I don't think I messed around with clarity. Uh, not for the ones that I took. You probably can. I see that it's got a little bit of a cool effect right there. It's kind of making the the clouds in the sky pop a little bit. I'm not too much about it though. Ooh, the haze looks really cool. That's something I wish I played with more. That looks really cool. I did not do that with the first three photos, but I think I'm actually... I think I'm going to leave that. I kind of like the way that looks. And then vibrance and saturation will just be the color of it. Um, the three that I put up I did not mess with vibrance or saturation at all. And then you will actually open it with Photoshop. So that's just kind of the in-between. Um, I know that a lot of times it's uh, uh, Photoshop. Uh, Photoshop begins, um, you import your photos pretty much through Bridge. And then after Bridge, uh, you go ahead and get the photos. Um, that's kind of like the in-between. I don't know if that's Bridge exactly, so I actually used Bridge one time and the app opened itself. That's just like the, I don't know what you call that, but that's what, that's what comes up before Photoshop. Uh, kind of a standard thing I do is master edit. It's just a, a technique I learned in college. Um, shout out to my professor. Uh, master edit, pretty much uh, you have the original right here, so if you mess anything up, can always just duplicate it and make that your new edit uh, but you obviously want to turn the visibility off because as you edit you won't be able to see any of the changes um, you can do more stuff here it's actually in Photoshop right now but for the three images I put on my Instagram uh, I just left it the same I went to file the moment I actually got it here and I just save for web um, and I just do it this way because I can make sure that I get the the actual um, controls that I want right here. Uh, you can export it as a GIF, 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 I don't know, whichever way you lean, GIF, GIF, you can export it as that. JPEG, PNG 8, PNG 24, and a WMP, which I've never really messed with before. I'm gonna Google that one day. I don't know what that is. Um, I usually put it out as a JPEG. 
Um, I like to do maximum. Mm -hmm. There you go. Maximum um, and then image size. I like to leave it as high as possible. And I will just save that. I'll do stars underscore four because this is my fourth stars picture. I just want to save it. for boom there is your new file um, this is one of the images I think I decided not to use because it's kind of it's kind of blurry I might have moved the camera a little bit that exposure is just so long that you will notice that just just tiniest movements um, is enough to uh, make it look blurry so I don't think this was one of the original ones I used but I really like the way it came out right now but with a lot of these things, you know, it's really important to actually get out there and start shooting, um, start trying it for yourself. I have tons of tutorials that I watch, tons of YouTubers that I watch, you know, Peter, the Peter McKinnons of the world, um, Mango Street, I just recently started watching. So watching all of them, you, you will learn so much, but if you never actually go out there and do it for yourself, you'll never actually know, you'll never actually um, understand the process. So. And just like going out there and finally this was my first time ever shooting stars and just getting it done that was so awesome for me it was so much fun I had a great time except except for the fact that I couldn't feel my fingers I had a great time so get out there go take some pictures and be awesome thank you for watching this video once again my name is Josue and I live in Chicago the greatest city in the world and I will see you in the next episode why did I say that so weird I'll see you in the next one bye